Hey guys, so I've been getting a lot of requests on making some videos on how I make my knives, uh, the finishing, you know, the whole kit and caboodle. So I'm out in the shop today taking advantage of some of the colder weather that we had. It's been about 100 degrees and plus that out in the shop here. So I got a knife. Unfortunately, I didn't videotape anything of the profiling and obviously grinding bevels and everything, but I figured I'll start with this, see how this works out with this video and go from there. Uh, what I got to do today is I have to do a convex edge, so I'm going to be working on a convex grind on this edge here, and then I'm going to be grinding in the clip, so we'll see how that works out with this knife. Overall, I think the profile shape design, I, I like it for a hunter, I think it's going to come out pretty cool, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. So this is an 80 CRV2 blade, I've been slowly transitioning over from 5160 to the 80 CRV. Main reasons because the 5160, it, it's becoming harder and harder to come by, um, especially anything decent. So I've been slowly transitioning over, like I said. Uh, I'm, I'm starting to like it. It took a little while. There's a lot of decar on the blade when you're forging and heat treating, but you know, to get through that, it just requires you to go back and, you know, Regrind, clean everything up after heat treating. Um, I don't do that a lot, or I didn't do that a lot in the past, but I've been doing it more and more with my blades. So you'll notice I already started a convex grind on this. What I like to do is I like to lay tape down. I like to keep my edges crisp, especially you know off the the main bevel and your transition lines here. So I use the tape to help give me a little bit of an angle using the slack of the belts. So you'll see what I mean when I, uh, I go through the process here. So what I'm doing is I'm tipping in, I'm putting a little bit of pressure up here, I'm tipping in using this slack in the belt here, and I'm helping, you know, using the tape to help keep the back edge off, keep most of the back edge off so you're not grinding up that plunge area. Also, doing it by hand with no gloves because if the knife's been heat treated, you don't want to get this thing super hot or you're going to lose your tempering and everything on it. So your hands, bare hands are the best thermometer you could use determining temperatures so if you get too hot obviously I got the quench bucket right there I can cool it right off but usually I just stop give it a couple seconds and we're good to go So you'd probably notice I went onto the platen right there. So what I like, what I noticed I didn't like is that I wasn't bringing the convex up high enough. So I'm trying to blend in the edge right here that was created on the slack belt, and just bring that up a little higher. That will ease the transition when I go up here or down here. When I'm doing the convex. When I'm using this part of the belt here, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bring my grind in closer to the edge. So what I start out with is two hundredths of an inch when I do my convex grinds, and that gives me the ability to, you know, give it a nice rounded edge. And then up here, when I'm using this part of the slack belt up here at the top, that there I'm trying to blend in my edge that I'm creating here.
see that's much better add a little more tape here I'm not too worried about this getting hit by the belt up here where my main bevel transitions I don't want to hit up here because I don't want to lose that hard crisp edge so what I'm going to do here is when I do the clip that's going to take care of all this you're not going to see this here all right, so I did some work off camera. We're there where I want to be. Right now, I'm, I mic'd it out. I'm about a little less than a hundredth of an inch. I don't like to go too much sharper, only because when I do the hand finishing, hand sanding, you're obviously gonna, it, it's gonna sharpen up. It's gonna become almost sharp. So, and I don't like working with sharp blades and clipping my fingers, because I've done that a few times as, probably every other knife maker so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move on to setting a clip and see how that turns out but overall I think it came out pretty good So here is one of the jigs that I've made. This is actually a KMG clone that I made probably 10, uh, maybe 15 years ago. It's worked great. It's simple. You know, I can modify as needed. I make all kinds of jigs, as you can see. Tracking, tracking's okay. I've had to make a few minor mod modifications to get the tracking perfect, but as you can see, this is you know, I do a 8-inch uh, wheel and a 4-inch wheel for different grinds, handle grinds, etc. Um, I have a jig here that I made that gives me my angle. I come in, I have my scribe lines in here. I'll clean this up before I get started, but I have scribe lines in here when I did my center for my main bevels. So I'll follow those up to whatever point I decide to take my, my clip up to. And it, it works well. I know there's a lot of other options out there in terms of grinders. I mean, everybody's making grinders now. But this one works good, and I got no complaints. So we finished this guy up, looks good, clips are on point, everything lines up good. So real quick, this jig here, I got a 4 inch wheel, I got this guide here that I placed. This works really good for knives that have an upswept tip where you can't really get in there on a flat platen. It makes it tough to kind of follow the, the, uh, the bend of the knife. This works really good for that. This also gives you the ability you can taper off to a straight point or you can come up and do a curved ending. If you're following me, curved ending on your clip. This one here, I kind of tapered off a bit. I followed the line. I, I like this sharp edge in here that you're seeing. So I followed that. This overall, I think came out great, this knife. Obviously hand finishing is gonna take up a lot of the the grind marks and the uh, the grit that you see in here on the blade itself. So I think that just about wraps it up. Let me know what you guys think. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Give me a like, leave a comment. If you don't, you don't. 
but like I said, it's my first one. I had a lot of calls to make a video, show some of the techniques, methods that I make knives with. So I finally decided, what the heck, let's do it. So let me know what you think. I guess it sums it up and see you next time.